Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Venice. Maybe you could begin with a brief introduction to your film, Luxembourg, Luxembourg. What can audiences expect if they watch it? Pretty much uh, entertaining film that provoke you to think about something serious. It's a funny journey of uh, two small uh, brothers to a small country, which is Luxembourg, Luxembourg is. And the twins is the reason why the title is so long and complex. If you could talk a bit about, you know, the genesis of the project and the original idea, but also how it sort of came to maybe have a new meaning or take on another life, you know, in respect of the events that have been happening in, in Ukraine recently. Uh, yeah, of course, because since the starting point for developing the script was the moment when my father passed away, it was 2016. I'm not about here to speculate about this, but being director is pretty much a great job because you can like invert any tragedy of your life into the movie. And uh, it's a maybe a bad joke, but I used to say that uh, it's kind of, he left me no sense, but left me a story for a million dollars. And it was almost the budget of the movie, you know. But it was not, not the matter. The main emotional charge was his absence, basically, and the emptiness he left with me. So I was like super curious, you know, to find who was the person who created me. And this will to find your creator is maybe uh, the main will of the heroes. And I think that in a good movie, main hero should be the one who tried to find God, you know. And in the end, this meeting should be uh, somehow arranged, you know. So this is what it's about. And of course, in the perspective of Ukraine now, I've been told that, you know, we like, had a lot of uh, this absent father generations, which is really, really sad. We had an absent father generation during 40s after the World War II. We had an absent father generation during the 90s uh, after the crime wars. So basically, particularly my father was part of this kind of generation, absent fathers. And now uh, Ukraine will be faced with a new generation of absent fathers who are now, I guess, defending the whole uh, civilization, probably. And it's a huge tragedy for their children and the way you used to watch at the world through the children's eyes. Of course, it's really, really, you know, hard. Uh, hard, uh, hard even absorbing my own son, you know, we've been evacuating from Kiev in the first days and he was super scared about the sirens hiding under the table and uh, he continued, it's like a half a year. Since I continue crying for his toys left there, but maybe he's not like the... He, su he suffered not as much as other children who are not longer with us. This is, this is the war. It's not the war, it's invasion, basically. It's not, like, not the war, it's more like invasion and try of absolute evil to destroy the whole nation. This is uh, what it's about, looks like. And uh, we will left... The war left not, not only ruins, but ruined families as well. But I guess it's information from press release I've been thinking about, and now I'm just repeating it. If you could tell us a bit about um, putting together the film and um, choosing your cast, uh, these two rap artists, yes. and, and, and what it was like working with them. It wasn't really hard to find them since they're a famous rap uh, group in Ukraine. They are part of the unique uh, language speakers, like Slobozhansky Surzik, it's like, uh, it's like Scousers, but you know, in, uh, in Ukraine, this sounds really strange, you know. So it, it, it was the reason why I uh, write to them. They're like uh, small people, of course, with big souls, but they're small people, go to small country. And the matter of their hate was hate. I mean, the, not like hatred, but hate uh, was, uh, was the matter I choose them. And it was really, really fun and great to work with them together because they are not play anything, they just live in the frame, which is a very typical thing said by a director, but this is the truth. Thinking about kind of the tone of your film, how for you, um, you know, the, you know, using the language of cinema, but also kind of having a lightness, if you like, even when dealing with things that can be quite kind of heavy topics or kind of emotionally weighty, let's say, um, how can that help you both to process them, um, but also allow the audience a way in and to empathize with the characters? My main like goals, uh, I used to go to it's to speak with audience about something serious while speaking with them in an entertaining way you know so it's like respectful talk you know i like films that are really respectful to the audience like like milos forman films or a, a lot of like coen brothers films they're really much uh, respectful for the audience but after the, their films you can think about a lot of things so this is this is the approach maybe other approach about the twins that they are like uh, carriers of uh, comedy, uh, comedy organic lifestyle. So 
they're basically comedy actors. It's easier for them to play comedy. And this was my approach to take the comedy actors and gave them the dramatic role. And this is the intonation I used to like in cinema, watching uh, particularly like the British cinema. I mean, the Mike Lee films, uh, Secrets and Lies, which is one of my favorites, and uh, Ken Loach as well, and uh, The Submarine maybe, but it's not like the good example and a good reference. The making of the film, but also the completing of the film, because that did coincide with, you know, the invasion. So that became what well, it seems like a story in itself. The story actually, since our producer went back to Kiev in first days, he is a truly brave man, Vladimir Yatsenko, braver than me since we evacuated to Western parts, sitting with family, hiding under the tables and so on. But producer was the one who got back to Kiev with a huge will, you know, to defend his native city and of course, he went to this dangerous parts in the first days, went collecting the hard drives and flashcards and the sound collecting into this one one hard drive because it was the first day of the war. We've been like, uh, get some news about interest from film festivals, you know, maybe because of this, maybe because it was a work for like three years working for us. It was important to save it and now to be able to speak about something important here in Venice. And we are not speaking about only important here, but also we try to speak about Ukraine as a country who can produce like uh, good films. And in that sense, what do you hope the people will take away from your film, but also what the impact of it will be, particularly that it's showing here in Venice? No, no, I'm, 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 just, I'm just anticipating an innovation, not less than five minutes. So it will be longer than Inirito's one. So Ukrainian media will be able to write like Ukrainian film, like get a huge ovation, huge applause in Venice. Uh, I'm maybe just kidding, but uh, I mean, the takeaway feeling after film as more, uh, I have a more approach to comedy films. So the laughing during the screening was like the main marker for me that film is working. But now uh, the like thoughtful, quiet calmness during watching is uh, good enough for me as well. Uh, so after the film, if everyone will be deep inside their thoughts, you know, thinking about parents accepting things that you cannot change in life, you know, so maybe it will be a great reason for me uh, why I'm here. And I understand you also recently had a screening of um, your debut film, um, was it in, in Ukraine? And just what that feeling was like for you? I wasn't prepared for this, you know, we've been not studied how to be a public person, We've been not studied how to speak, how to be uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, responsible for uh, the this uh, heavy back called publicity, you know. It was hard. I've missed uh, maybe the best parts of early childhood of my son, giving uh, dozens of interview to like local radios and uh, to Cosmopolitan magazine as well. They've made a cringe photo session for me, which I'm not maybe really proud of, but during this photo session, I missed the childhood of my son. So it was like, like this, basically. The screening of my first film, Ukraine, was a bit, a bit popular, you know, and a bit surprising. Uh, it's very surpriseful for uh, the world, you know, to see something funny from Ukraine. It's like nonsense. It's like Indian horror for us. We always imagine them dancing and singing, but for some reason they try to scare us now, you know. The theme kind of in your film, though, of, of the fear of replicating, perhaps, what, the, the, what we had growing up, so you don't want to be the absent father like your father was. It's my fear, but uh, maybe life is super strange. Uh, we have no idea what is the like uh, safe path for us to become a good person, like a normal father. So I, I have no idea what is to be a director, what is to be a father. I, to be honest, I feel like uh, my personality is way much more smaller than the responsibility I have faced with now. So. And can you tell us what you're going to be working on next and how kind of going through this experience may shape you as a filmmaker in the this future? Exper this experience of war, even like as not a deeply participant, but of course as kind of we, we've made a lot of things concerning it. It impacts every aspect of life and uh, I, I developed some stories, one of them about refugees, which is really absurdic. It explores the borders of morality of the European society. And explaining my film, one critic told me that Luxembourg, Luxembourg is like a try to explain for Europe what is Ukraine is for them. It's like uh, trying to find father in Europe, like some strong figure, you know, bringing chaos and cosmos uh, simultaneously uh, with these two twins. So maybe it's kind of a good explanation. Of, of it, yeah. It's funny to think about it, Nisa. And do you feel hope?
for the future right now? No, no, of course. I, I hope uh, for somehow we will be alive, for somehow we will be try to face with all these challenges. I'm, I'm really proud of Ukraine, proud of this unity together with a lot of great people now making great, brave things. We are a Ukrainian group here, the strangest festival that could ever happen, you know, it's surrealistic. We have casting director now, Ala Samoylenko, who is the mother of Ilya Samoylenko, who is a uh, one of the Azov style defenders. He's in prison now. She's a mother. She had no idea where he is now. He's a, he's a brave soldier, is a hero. But for mom, of course, he she wants him just to be alive. This is our group here. You know, this is how it uh, looks. Some some of them like deep inside it. Some of them less. Twins are famous volunteers. So uh, donate to them by PayPal if you want to like help. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me.